Just wanna keep talking to you guys. All right, I love coffee so much. Bronson just sent me a video that the wind is pumping by him. It's not so bad, yeah? I don't think it's that bad. Um, I'm gonna make this thing full of coffee. This proper winter fishing mouth. And I'm also lazy. For 70 days I've been able to not get cold. Have coffee when I want. It's been it's been chill. So we got enough mallet for our first few throws, yeah? Uh, we stopped at a place that's not the perfect uh, structure, but it's, it's fine for first throw. And because it's the right window now, the sun is about to rise behind me, as you can see. Stunning, stunning sunrise. But there's enough water to hold a fish or so. So we're quickly going to put a bait out, organize our stuff, leave it in for about 45 minutes or so, and then we'll start moving and look for another spot. There should be a... They haven't pulled anything bad, eh? Nah. So if they're in the clear, I can stay by you? Yep. That'll be much better. I'm not saying that I don't want to stay... I know what you mean. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Shit! I need my bucket. So I'm going to show you guys what I'm throwing towards just now. Look at that beautiful sunrise. There is no better day to do this. Come on. Ivy, Ivy, Ivy. Hey little fella. Please go get me a Mr. Cobby. Please, Mr. Mully. Bye boy. Bye boy. So always when you start, if you're gonna start sliding a mullet, I like to keep him on me. So after I've thrown, he's in the water right next to me. I don't need to peg my rod. I don't need to go make sure there's tight line again. Everything is perfect for when I'm about to slide because they get wrapped up quite easily. So make sure you look after your line, make it nice and tight after you've thrown. Uh, once it's settled, make it nice and tight, keep it tight, take the mully off you, and then you can uh, slide in straight away. Which is what I've done here today. Always start with small, fast jerk, just like that. Just like that. Then once, uh, you can't see the slide, once the slide is submerged in the water, you start slowing it down. Okay, I'm quickly going to make two throws of the paddle tail. I have a 6 inch McCarthy Orca here. As you can see. Um, again, not fishing the most ideal formation. But I can reach the back bank. So, and there is a trough in the front. It's got an exit hole on the, on the left. So it's, it's alright. It's actually better for paddle tail than live bed, I would say. I'm just going to make like three or four throws. Uh, while that live bait is sitting there waiting for a nice cob and then we'll set up everything and then we'll try to find a new spot if we don't get a bite but I think we might get that one fishy that's staying behind here I really hope so Woo! the water's colder than it is outside Woo! Come on, Cobby. Come on, fishies. I 
have no water left, so we're gonna fish for a lot of gar we're gonna make like five throws over this lip here. You can just see it's flat. No, it's not throwing towards a bank or anything, so I've gone for a bucktail, fishing for a leary. They don't mind this formation. And then we're gonna carry on walking up. Uh, waiting for the tide to push. We're just gonna make two or three throws here. Often a nice thing to do when you're doing live bait fishing and you're walking for, for formation, you stop at places like this just to make a couple of throws with the bucktail or the plug or whatever. In the spot, uh, it's spring low, so it's definitely a little bit too low now, but it's gonna look nice, I reckon. What do you say, Bron? Within an hour? Yeah, hour, two hours of push is gonna cook. Yeah. yeah, so an hour or two hours of push, it's gonna look nice. It's, it's, it's nine now, it's low at 10, it's gonna look nice then. There might, it's not the perfect timing for a car, but there might be a car because there's a bit of color in the water. But in the meantime, we're gonna throw a bait, we're gonna leave it on that bank, see if there's a lost cobby or something coming over, and then we're gonna walk to the left. So it's like basically open sea, which is not ideal for edible, but it's winter time. So we're gonna fish for a garrick, and a garrick don't mind eating straight over a lip. We're just gonna throw short just, just over the lip, and we're gonna work some bucktails and maybe some plug and stuff over the lip, see if we can't get a chase or something, something to it. There's a lot of mullet, a lot of bait fish, sea's nice, dolphins, so I'm sure there might be some activities, so stay tuned. I'm trying to get a couple of mullet now, just on the beginning of the push, just so we have bait. And usually what's lacquer to look for is you'll find them on the edges of the banks, you'll find the mullets. Also we see a bit of brown foam. Mullets always like to lay in the brown foam, so check for brown foam or look for along the edges of the banks, so you'll usually find them there. that I'm using. I get asked so much about setups and things. So this is my go-to carb setup. Honestly, probably my favorite rod. Evo Gold, medium heavy. Very, very nice. Lovely for throwing baits with the, with the smaller fibro, throwing onto, onto far banks. It's also, I enjoy it for a live bait as well. Some people think it's a bit light, but I'm not someone that throws my live bait far. I like walking to where I want my live bait to be and then lobbing at 30 to 60 meters. So this is, this is my setup, I've got a 10,000 Saragossa, it's even medium heavy, 30 pound JDB ultra tough, nothing better, fishing an 80 pound rated leader, and then it turns my hook trace, which I get asked tons about, it's about 1.3 meters in length, I've got about a meter of running sinker, and then I've got a stop here, and then I've got about 65 to 80 centimeters of actual trace this is this is what's going to be moving the mullet's going to be working with this bit and then when that cob feeds you've got this this movement happening all along to this swivel so you've got all about a meter of movement and um, that just helps when it, when you're fishing a strong sea especially and you're throwing a stronger sinker a heavier sinker with bigger wires and you get the bite you don't want the fish to be put off if it's a flat sea, you fish a light sinker, it doesn't really matter. But if you're fishing a stronger sea or areas like in the Eastern Cape, come to us and you're fishing a heavy wire sinker, you want it to be running because if you get that bite and your sinker's stuck, especially with Garrick, they, they, they get spooked. And once he's spooked, he doesn't come back. So that's just my, my trace. And what I've got here is a 180 pound JDB leader. So yeah, quickly I'm going to hook it. Catch our molly. The hook that I've got here is a 70 BKK offset, uh, very similar to the Fusion. And then sinker, I'm using a 60 after six ounce. And all you do is you hook that, you hook that little braided leader over one of those wires, push it through the top of the eye. like so take your hook hook it on this side just through the loop this side through the loop twist till you get just enough space to put it underneath again twist it again and then go this side 
Now some people don't actually hook it through the braid, but I hook it through the braid because then I know it's not going to untangle. And there we go. Now that mullet's going to take almost no pressure while you're casting. The hook is nice and proud and it will stay alive for long. Well, let's go see if we can't get a Garrick. Two liveys over the lip and two on the bank on the side. Now it's just a matter of waiting games. Throw a little bit of lure while we wait. Oh shit! 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 <laughs> Me and Bronson having coffee there. Eventually we got a bite. Ah! It still feels like there's some weight on it. No uh, shakes or anything. Maybe, maybe it's just the sandy that's out. Maybe the sink is dragging. Maybe it was one too blind or something. But I can't believe we haven't had a bike yet. The rommet is nice. The live bank tree looks nice. A couple of guys had fish this morning when we walked onto the beach. And I think it's a matter of finding them. As soon as you find them, Maybe you get him. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> what prize catch is that? So you and Ify will not be fat with him. It's called uh, the biscuit, right? They like biting when nothing else is biting. <laughs> Don't worry guys, if you're watching this video, then we caught another fish. So I won't publish it. <laughs> this is the only fish we catch. <laughs> oh, look at him guys. It's called a biscuit ray. Right? Got like a see-through nose. Got a thorny tail. It's pretty good bait for big sharks. Um, they don't have teeth like their thorn, ta thorn tail and the spear nose. Yeah, actually kind of pretty. It runs kind of pretty. Mm, no, <laughs> not really. Alright, we're going to put him back. Well done, Duvan! Well done! Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Round three, let's go Mr. Mali. Fricky was a bad name, so let's try Earl. Come on Mr. Earl, please get me a Corby or a Garrick. See he's pushing a bit, so finally something to work with here. So the tide pushed and eventually produced a bite. I mean, we've been waiting how long for a decent bite. And I was just saying to Bronze. Yeah. Bite was so sexy. Yeah? Okay. So eventually. Feels like an edible this. Uh, but slow, shaking head. Not a big fish. But we've been waiting for this because the tide's finally pushing it. I was telling Bronson I feel demotivated because it feels like I made the wrong call. Because my gut and everything's telling me that the fish should be biting now. We're just not getting a bite. Now eventually it's pushing up here. So hopefully 
Hopefully we can land this one. Look up some more can come over. When you're fighting edible fish, especially with braid, you keep that tip up. You don't drop the rod all the way down. You just let the tip do the work for you. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go grab it. Jerry! Okay, so it was a Garrick. It came off in the shallows. I couldn't take it. It was probably about a four kilo Garrick. What do you call that? Uh, quick release, quick release. And I'm fishing two hooks for a Garrick. The freaking hook still came up. Hey, oh well. What Least size was it? Four kilos, five kilos. Oh, not bad. Not bad. You know, me and Bronson have just decided that that was very, very unnecessary. That was no fair. At all. Like, not fair. Bastard, I was like, here's some hope for you guys. Show you a fishy. Like a little five kilo Garrick. And then it just gave us the finger. Just gave us the finger. <laughs> What a crappy first few days of fishing. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, we caught nothing. I don't even know if we're gonna make this video. But if I do, that's life, eh? We all fish. If you've watched this far in this video, <laughs> then you're clearly bored. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then you're bored, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry if you're bored. If you were bored during lockdown, it's fine. But anyway, if you did watch this far, thank you for supporting. Um, yeah, that's what fishing's all about, eh? And um, I, I actually put on the camera to show you this. I mean, it's such a beautiful day. We had such a beautiful day on the beach. Just chat shit. It's good to see friends again. I mean, are you even allowed to legally gather now? I don't think you can even go have a bride or friend's house legally. So this is, in a way, this is, this is kind of your legal gathering, in essence. So, good to see old, see old Bronze again. Always is. Tomorrow we are going deep sea fishing. Maybe I'll make a two-part series. Okay, don't watch the first part of the two-part series. Sorry to ruin it. Start off with the shore and then deep sea. Okay, hopefully tomorrow's <laughs> deep sea is more successful than today's one land. Stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching. Sorry for you guys. No fish, but hopefully you learned something. Let me know in the comments if you did. Cheers. <coughs> How's that for a setup? Huh? That's how you should live your first day after lockdown.